Once upon a time, in the ancient land of Greece, a great battle took place that would determine the fate of the Macedonian Empire and secure Roman control over the Near East. This is the story of the Battle of Pydna, a clash of empires that changed the course of history. The stage was set in the 3rd century BCE, when Rome first intervened in Greece during the Second Punic War. The Macedonians, under the leadership of King Philip V, aimed to conquer Greece, but Rome and various Greek city-states joined forces to resist them. The Romans, recognizing the threat of Macedonian dominance, sought to maintain Greek independence. After the defeat of the Macedonians in the Second Macedonian War, Philip V's son, Perseus, ascended to the throne and revived his father's ambition to conquer Greece. This led to the Third Macedonian War, in which Rome allied with Pergamum to oppose Perseus' expansionist aspirations. The early stages of the war were challenging for the Romans, as they suffered several defeats at the hands of Perseus' forces. It was not until the arrival of Lucius Aemilius Paulus, a capable Roman commander, that the tides began to turn. Paulus retrained his troops and devised a cunning plan to defeat Perseus. In June 168 BCE, Paulus executed his plan, known as the Hammer and Anvil Strategy. He intended to hold Perseus in camp while launching a flanking attack from the northwest, striking the Macedonian rear. However, Perseus learned of the Roman maneuver and managed to extricate his army from the trap. The Romans pursued Perseus, eventually catching up with him near the Lucas River, south of the city of Pydna. On the eve of the battle, a lunar eclipse occurred, which the Romans interpreted as a good omen, while the Macedonians saw it as a bad omen, causing some unease among their ranks. On the fateful day of June 22, 168 BCE, a truce was in place to allow both sides to draw water from the Lucas River. However, a misunderstanding led to a sudden rush for weapons, breaking the truce. Perseus quickly organized his forces, positioning his phalanxes in the center, mercenaries on the left flank, and cavalry on the right. The battle commenced, and at first, Perseus seemed to gain the upper hand as his phalanxes crashed into the forming Roman legions. The mercenaries on his left successfully repelled a counterattack by the Roman allied infantry. However, the advantage soon shifted as the Macedonian formation struggled to navigate the hilly terrain near the Roman camp. Seizing the opportunity, Paulus inserted his troops and war elephants into the openings of the faltering Macedonian line. The Romans fought with great ferocity, inflicting heavy casualties on the Macedonians. Reportedly, up to 20,000 Macedonians were killed, and another 11,000 were taken prisoner. The Roman losses were comparatively minimal. The Battle of Pydna marked the end of the Third Macedonian War and extinguished Macedonia as a threat to its neighbors. Rome disarmed the Macedonians, punished those who aided Perseus, and divided Macedonia into four separate republics. These republics were subjected to a moderate tribute payment to Rome. Perseus himself was captured and died in captivity in Italy. With their victory at Pydna, the Romans solidified their control over the Near East and expanded their influence in the region. The battle became a turning point in the history of ancient Greece and set the stage for Rome's dominance in the Mediterranean world. The Battle of Pydna remains a testament to the strategic prowess of Lucius Aemilius Paulus and the military might of the Roman Republic. It serves as a reminder of the significant role that conflicts played in shaping the ancient world and the enduring legacy of Roman conquest and empire.